Hey, I'm Brian Kona, Be Co Knives. In this video, we're gonna be making a super simple rebar shepherd's hook that I forge out right here in the shop. I'm super excited, let's get into it. The last time we did a rebar shepherd's hook on this channel, we did this design right here. And don't get me wrong, this is a very simple design, but as you can see, there's one, two, three separate bends that you will have to put in to make this rebar shepherd's hook, and I can make it even better and even quicker. This took me three heats to do all three bends. I can do better. So that's what we're gonna do today. Here's what we're gonna need to do. First thing you're gonna do is go down six inches, put a nine, or just past 90 degree bend. You'll see that it's, it's not 90, it's just past 90. And then all you have to do next, go down 12 inches and do just past 90 in the other direction, and boom, there's your shepherd's hook. It's the end style shepherd's hook. It's just as effective as that other one, but I think that this looks cleaner and it's gonna get done quicker because you've got two heats instead of three, which means you can be more efficient in making a bunch of these. So let's go ahead and get these things prepped and get going on it. I appreciate you all helping my small channel by hitting that subscribe button. I know it's free to you and it doesn't cost you a thing, but it goes a long way to help my small channel grow. I appreciate you guys. Now what I'm doing here is I'm getting my rebar all stacked up so I can cut it with the angle grinder. The only reason why I'm cutting these things down is because my customer wants a five foot tall shepherd's hook once they're driven two foot down into the ground. Of course, if you want a taller shepherd's hook, go ahead and skip this step. I'm not gonna lie, that's probably not the safest way to cut rebar, so please be careful when you do this project yourself. Hey, the other thing is, uh, I have a bunch of rebar cutoffs now, so if you know of a project that I can work on in the forge to use up this rebar, let me know in the comment section down below. Next, we're gonna be grinding the tips that go down into the ground. Uh, basically, we're just grinding on a nice little point. We're gonna jump over on my Broadback 2x72 and get those ground in. As you can see, it's just like grinding a pencil. You're just grinding in a quick tip on the end. The only little bit of advice I have for you is don't you dare use a new belt. You would absolutely waste all of that grit. You should find the worn out most piece of crap belt you have left and grind it on that. Hey, hey, we're finally to the fun part, forging out these bends. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is knock over the first bend over to 90 degrees. Now, the most simple way to do that is to hit it on the far end so that you're hitting on colder steel and not hitting directly on the bend. If you hit directly on the bend, you're gonna get a weird wave in your, in your piece of steel and you don't really want that. Once you've done that, go ahead and push it on the side of the anvil to give it that nice, just past 90 degree bend of what you're looking for. I'm gonna show you a different angle so you can get a better look at what this process looks like. As you can see here, I'm hitting on the end of the piece of steel so that I'm not hitting directly on the bend. This makes for a straighter piece of steel overall because you're introducing less waves and wobbles, which is what you're not really looking for. And then of course, just like I showed you before, I give it a nice little push on the side of the anvil to give it that just past 90 degree bend. To put in that second bend, I have my ruler set up on my anvil so I can measure out that 12 inches and then I do the exact same thing as last time where I hit it on the cooler piece of steel to try to add in less wobbles and less bends into it. Now here you can see I didn't quite succeed with the first couple of hits and you can see just a little bit of extra bend in there which is why I'm straightening it out and spending a little bit more time which isn't really that efficient so try not to do that. Let's switch to that other angle so you can see it done a lot better. Just like before, I'm measuring it out on my ruler to get that 12 inch mark and then I find my bend and I hit it on the cooler part of the steel.
with this bend, we are not looking to get it to that final dimension. You're still gonna need a little bit more of a bend here in a minute, but what you're trying to do is get that 90 degree angle. While you still have a little bit of heat, you can finish the bend right down here on the ground. Man, who says that you need to do all of your forging with your hammer and anvil anyways? These shepherd hooks stand about seven foot tall, but once you knock them two feet into the ground to make them stable, they'll stand right about that five foot where my customer wants them. Um, these are super simple and I love the way they turned out. Now, if you just wanted the, you know, just to hang something up and it doesn't matter what it looks like, go ahead and drive these into the ground because this is perfect. But I want to save these things from the elements since they're going to be outside. I'm going to put some black enamel paint on it. So let's get painting. After that quick coat of paint, this project is done and I am incredibly pleased with how these rebar shepherd's hooks turned out. You know, whether you're experienced in a forge or you're just getting into it, this is a great weekend project to make something up yourself and hang up those flower baskets or the bird feeders or whatever else you want to hang up around your house. Man, I really suggest that you take on this project. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all of the people who watch all the way to the end of the video because that is a huge algorithm boost in YouTube. Hey, while, you, while you're supporting my small channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Do the likes in the comments. I really need to know what to do with those cut off pieces of that rebar. If you have an idea of what I could do with it, let me know in the comment section down be below. Also check out my, my Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok pages. Yes, I have a TikTok. If, if you have TikTok, check out my TikTok. It's, it's a lot of fun over there. Um, if you want a custom knife, the best way to get one made by me is to message me on Facebook or Instagram. We'll have a conversation back and forth and I'll get something custom built just for your likings. Thank you guys all for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Now here's a little Easter egg for all of you dedicated people who watched all the way to the end. Normally what I do here at BconeKnives.com is make custom knives. So making these projects are kind of a side thing for me, but I really appreciate all of you people who stick it out and watch all of my stuff. And even all of those people that watch all the way to the end of the videos. Now, I know I say it a lot that the people who watch it to the end or the people that subscribe mean a lot to me. But really, um, YouTube doesn't really make me a whole lot of money. I'm just now, let's say, well, shoot, I'm two years into doing YouTube videos. And I am just now making my first $100 from AdSense. Now, that is a lot of time and a lot of money to spend making these YouTube videos. So I'm doing all of these videos at a tremendous loss because, I mean, a lot. some of these videos, a lot of them this year so far have been just, you know, me shooting them and editing myself. But normally I have Kyle and, you know, I love his videos and you guys obviously watch those ones a lot more because the videography is just so, so nice. But there's a cost to it, so I, I normally lose a, l a bunch of money on those videos, which is why I've kind of had to cut back this year. So if you guys want to, you know, please go ahead and check out all of my social medias and send me a message about what you would like to see on this channel. Um, man, it's just you guys that watch all the way to the end that do a whole lot to, you know, make making YouTube videos worth it to me, and I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Um, yeah, I love your encouragement. Thank you guys for watching. Man, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just painting these things up and you guys are still watching it. So you guys are the dedicated few. Love you guys.